Hello, in this video I'm going to take you through how to associate beacons to content in your Lockly native app. Now here I've got the standard Lockly native demo which I'll be using to show you how to link your beacons in the system itself. Now the first thing I need to do when I launch the editor for the app is make sure that the app knows about the type of beacon I want to use. Now this is done under the location tab and we call the different beacon types beacon regions. By default it'll come with the UUID which is this long number here that's associated with the Lockley beacons. But let's say if I had an estimate beacon or a contact IO or another form of beacon I'll need to add the UUID of that beacon to my app. Otherwise the app won't be listening to those beacons at all and it's as if they're switched off um, and it's it's blind to its surroundings. So let me click add beacon. Now the standard um, UUID for Estimote is this one here which I've got in my um, clipboard and I'm going to call it an Estimote beacon. I add that in. Now this becomes uh, part of the list of UUIDs that the app is listening to. So that's the first part of what I need to do. Make sure the app knows about the type of beacon I want it to listen out for. Now we've got two uses of beacons in Lockly. We've got capability of sending notifications when I'm nearby and we've also got a softer use of beacons where the list of cards in a collection is sorted by the nearest at the top and this uses a combination of GPS and beacons. So you may want to use a mixture of both for example, when I enter a room, I might want to get a notification saying, here is the collection for this room. And then in that collection, I might have four or five cards. And I want the sequence of cards to change as I walk around the room so that the closest um, point to me, the card is on the top. Now, I'll show you how to do both of those. Now, just to refresh you of the content in the Lockley Native demo, if I click on the demo itself, what I'm going to use here is the car types as my list of things I want to call out on. Um, in the demo, this is a different card according to each car types to show you what's possible. Now, let's say that I've got a um, an audio file for a an image that I want to make a visible and come to the top when I'm nearby. What I would do there is I would click on the card in question. I've drilled down to the audio card here. At the top here, I've got the Cars Location uh, menu tab. I tap this, and now I can associate it with a beacon. So let me click the Add. It's going to ask for the UUID. Now, this is going to come from the list of the app UUIDs that we entered right at the very beginning. So again, we've got the standard Lockley one and the new Estimate one that I uh, entered at the beginning. So let me put that one in. Each beacon has two numbers associated with. You'll find this either printed on the side or through the configuration app that came with your beacon. The major and the minor uh, are numbers from 1 to 65,000 odd and I just need to note them down and enter them in the screen here. I click add and that's it. Now this card is associated with that individual beacon and it means when I'm nearby in the collection which I've got here the audio card will move to the top automatically. So this allows me to very easily know what is nearby because that information is always on the top. Now we call this a soft use of beacons because it just subtly changes the ordering. Um, if I have the phone in my pocket or I'm not in this collection I won't know anything at all about this piece of content. To do that we're going to have to use a more direct method of using beacons and we call that notifications. Notifications are done on the top level of the app. So I'm going to click on the app icon here on the left hand side. It takes me to the top level of the demo app I've got here. And you can see right at the very far end here, a notification tab, which I'll now tap on. This has no notification set currently, so let me go ahead and add one. Now there are five types of notifications that we can have. Two are to do with GPS and three to do with beacons. There is a subtlety in terms of the use of beacons, certainly on iOS, as far as background notifications are concerned. And you'll find information about this on our site and in a more technical document in the app area when you log in. For now, I'm going to use an enter beacon. And this is going to bring up a pop-up, 
with quite a few settings. Now let me go through and describe what each one of those does. The top level here is what triggers the notification. Again, I can give the details of the beacon. So I'll use estimate again here. I have to use a major and a minor number again. Now, it could be the same as the one that orders. I can use beacons multiple times. They are just references at the end of the day. Then I've got an option of whether this should trigger in the foreground or in the background. And I can have both for uh, this uh, enter beacon notification type. Um, I've then got a suppress firing option. What this means is if you think about entering a room and it's seen the beacon, so I get a notification saying, you know, welcome to our music room, have a dis discover all the mar marvelous instruments we have in this room. Let's say I then walk out of the room, uh, down the corridor, and then I return at some point. Maybe I want to suppress the notification for a number of minutes or seconds or hours so I don't get bombarded by the same one all the time. Or maybe not. Maybe I want to send you a notification every single time you enter that room. This is the setting that allows me to configure that. By default, it's 60 seconds, which is quite low. And that's so that you can actually make use of it during testing. Normally, let's say I want to make it so that it's every hour, let's say. So that would be 60 seconds times 60 uh, minutes. So that's 3,600. That means when I enter the room, I will get a notification. It doesn't matter if I leave the room and come back again any time within that hour, I won't get any further notifications. It's asleep. Now, this is only for me. Anybody else that's new to that room enters, they will then get the notification as well. The setting is on a per user basis, not a per beacon basis. So that's how I set up the beacon. Now, the next area is uh, what language. I won't go into that now, but I can give different notifications for different languages. But the content area is what appears on my screen when this notification fires. Now, I can have a title and a body, which are required. So I shall have a welcome as a title and discover the magical uh, instruments in our music room as the body. You'll need a bit of uh, work on to how to phrase these correctly. Um, quite often we find that a little bit of a teaser or some enticement to tap on it works well. Now, what the action should be when I tap on it is down to the picked like linked item here. We can link into pretty much anything within the app. That's either a specific card or a collection of cards. This has all the content that I've got in my app. And because it's quite large, maybe I want to link into a specific, um, say, uh, audio card that we did previously. So if I type in AU here, it reduces the number of cards because it's got a search facility in there. I click the audio card. And now that's done. That means when I enter that beacon, it'll say welcome, discover the magical instruments in our music room. And when I tap on that, it'll then take me to the audio card and start to run it. Two other things I've got here. Um, for foreground behavior, we can actually automatically take you there without you having to click. This is done by changing the two settings we have here. One, uh, the first one here is how long should the notification appear at the top of the app? And the other one is, how long should we wait until we take you there automatically? Or should we not bother at all? So we just give you a notification, you'd have to click on it to, uh, to take you there. Quite often what we find is having something like three seconds works well if you want to automatically take somebody to a card. You don't want to take them immediately there because it looks like a random jump. But having a notification, a couple of seconds to read it, and then a little bar that counts down, so over three or four seconds before taking you there, gives you context as to what's happening and what to expect where you go next. The last setting here is just for the background behavior. So again, foreground is here, background behavior is here. We can't take you there automatically in background. Um, you have to actively tap on it. But we could enable or disable sound. Um, now sound here is subjective. If I've got my phone on uh, quiet mode, this is either nothing at all or a vibration. The user has full control of their device and we can't override that. But if I do want to have some notification sound or, or, or vibration, then I'd enable that. It is by default. And sometimes you might want to delay the time between detecting the beacon and firing the notification. 
if you think about um, maybe somebody walks into a room and quite often walks into the center room and that's when you want the notification to trigger you might give it maybe 15 seconds delay until it's triggered again this is down to your environment so you know what works best with that information I can quickly review and if I'm happy I can save it and now this is set to be triggered when I'm nearby if you're trying this out on Lockly Native there's two things you need to do to make sure that it'll actually work. The first thing is to make sure that you've refreshed the app on the Lockly Native Preview app itself. And if you've added a new beacon type, it's often quite worthwhile force quitting that app and relaunching again, because it'll then formally register for that beacon with the operating system, which might otherwise not happen if you're just incrementally adding new beacon types. That's it. I've shown you how to add the beacon to the app, which is the estimate beacon here, the family of beacons. We've gone through and added a soft beacon to the car type so that it rises to the top when I'm nearby. And we've also added a notification which will bring my attention to that card when I enter that beacon location. And that's how we do beacon linking with content on Lockly Native.